The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. Man, week two of the NFL season starting tomorrow. More college football. Week three of college football. Malik and I have a lot to discuss. And I can't wait to hear his take on those Michigan Wolverines. Um, so we'll talk about them. And I'm guessing Spartans. I won in picks the first week. I'm just, wow. I'm just guessing. Wow, we will get to that when we get to the NFL. Confidence. Listen, I'm deflecting. Okay. I'm I don't deflecting. know if you remember who you even picked. I, I barely do. Exactly. That's what <laughs> I, I barely do. Because you'll be surprised at some of these picks that we made. Um, so, anyway, we'll start with college. Um, we'll get the Spartans out of the way. They are 2 0, they're at the top of the Big Ten. Rah, rah, rah. They're not going to stay there. Um, but it's a good, it's a decent start. Um, again, week one looked really rough. Last week against Maryland looked rough, but it looked better at the same time. Um, Aiden Childs had four turnovers. <laughs> he had three picks and a fumble that he lost. And the offensive line still doesn't look that great. Um, the run game is okay. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, Nate Carter had a better game. But, um, yeah, I, it, again, it's just like if Aiden can figure out who to connect with as a receiver, which against Maryland it was Nick Marsh, and he was one of the guys that coming into the season a lot of people were excited about. At Maryland, he looked really good. and He looks like a phenom, Joey. Yeah. I don't want you to undersell <laughs> how special – when was the last time an MSU receiver looked like that? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Well, when was the last time an MSU senior popped like that, like consistently yeah, throughout the game? As a senior, I don't know. I'm just like any at any level. This this dude is 18. Yeah, and he's just running free. Mm-hmm. Like it. I I'm sorry. I just I just no. That's yeah. it's fair. I, and part of it though, I think too, is like again the newer offense. Like we don't normally in past years, there's been plenty of talented receivers that Michigan state has had, but have they utilized them to their full potential? Probably not. Keon Coleman left for a reason. Uh, Jaden Reed looks better in the NFL than he ever ever did in college. People always knew that Jaden Reed was good, but you never fully saw it. Him and Jalen Naylor both looked really good in that magical season they had. Right. But at the same time, like they're still showing that they had even even more in the tank. Um, And so now, you know, we're getting a, like Nick Marsh is the perfect blend of size, speed, talent. And he's going to be playing with Aiden the rest of their careers. Um, Hopefully, hopefully let's guess let's not get ahead of ourselves, but that's the exciting part about the whole thing. Um, how much did he end up with? 194 yards. Yes. I was like, I can't remember if he hit 200 or not. Um, I don't know if he nationally won freshman of the week, but several uh, sites and like yeah, he had different things had him as freshman of the week in college football. Right. He had eight catches, 194 yards, a 77-yard bomb yeah. to Aiden threw. And that, yeah, that throw was ridiculous. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what we saw in week one, but Aiden they, they weren't really connected. connected. Yeah. yeah, they weren't connected. So – that's where I, I've I, can't, I keep drawing a comparison to Jameis Winston, um, and it's more of his NFL comp because it's like it's late Jameis Winston, not yeah. early Jameis Winston. Right, just throw it up there and just hope that your arm talent wins out. Um, so if if Aiden can kind of, I don't I don't want to say reel it in because you want him to keep pushing, hone his skills, right? But just just keep getting better. Yeah, yeah. Um, work on the accuracy just a little bit, get a little bit better chemistry with these guys because yeah. when it looks good, it looks great. Yeah. And if those two 
continue to grow, that's going to be scary for the Big Ten. I'm I'm afraid. Yeah. I I already said how high I was on Aiden Childs, and we've talked about Nick Marsh and what he could do. Yeah. But seeing him break out just like that in game two, that, that's, that like makes MSU fans, I'm sure, like the Plexico Burrs, Charles Rogers days, mm-hmm. where they just had back to back stud phenoms yeah. that you could just go to over and over again. Right. It looks like maybe he could be that one day, mm-hmm. and that's scary. <laughs> yeah. And then again, like we keep, like I feel like we keep saying is like, if, if just another receiver, can step up, yeah. whether and it's Glover made a few plays. Yeah, yeah, and he's the guy that I always keep looking to that I think he could become something. Um, but maybe for this season, it continues to be Montori Foster. Um, he did look better in the second game yeah. as well. So maybe he's more of the the safety pin uh, for Aiden, and then you know Nick Marsh is that big play guy. That's a the start of a good offense. Plus, you know we're known for running the ball. Um, running backs aren't too bad. Again, the the biggest problem is that offensive line is just it's not great. So that's going to be yeah, the they the they ran for four point three yards per carry, which isn't great, but it's right. also not yeah. terrible. I would say it's, it's not an, as bad as week one. It's yeah, it's an improvement. Yeah. Um, and the defense actually they did pretty good. Um, I mean, as far as like Maryland had a really good week one, so I was kind of nervous going into this yeah. game. That, Billy Edwards actually played well, the quarterback. Yeah, but. The the front seven for MSU again showed up. Right. Um, so, yeah, they, you know, let Billy Edwards do what he wanted, but they stopped the run game. Maryland couldn't really run on them. Um, and like you said, that front seven for MSU is solid. Um, so there's some hope there with the defense. And this week they get Prairie View, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, and then – the following week, you got to prep for really, Boston College. Really, really interesting. I am so – it's weird to say this. I'm excited to watch that game because <laughs> yeah. you got Boston College reeling all of their Florida State win, yeah, and they just smacked the FCS team. Mm-hmm. So they're building confidence. And they're playing Missouri this week. Yeah. So we'll really know what Boston College is uh, this weekend. Yeah, but uh, just a, a few numbers to reflect what MSU's offense did in the passing game-wise. Eight catches Nick Marks. Uh, Nick Marsh, six catches, Jaron Glover for 84 yards and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Montori Foster, six catches, 53 yards and a, and a touchdown. Yeah. And then Jack Velling, three catches, 25 yards. Yeah. That's incredibly balanced. Yeah. And yeah. The, and that's mixed in with the mistakes, but that's right. what you'd like to see. Yeah. That kind of balance. Yeah. And they, they did more of a balanced run, too, where we saw uh, K. Ron Lynch Adams get just as many touches as Nate uh, yeah. Carter. And then and they both pretty much rush for five yards a carry. Yeah, I think the biggest surprise for me though, they threw it thirty nine times. Like they let Aiden go for it. Yeah. Um, they didn't play too conservatively, which I liked. Um, I honestly that think that's the best thing Jonathan Smith could do. Yeah. Don't put any restrictions on him. Yeah. Let just him open it yeah, up. Let him get all of it out right now. Right. Exactly. So I'm. I hate to keep saying that I'm 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 getting more hopeful, but. There's there's some hope there. And then we saw, you know, the the other game when they get into their their gauntlet stretch, we'll we'll talk about it in a few weeks. Maybe Iowa just had a good week one. Because last week they, they looked did, more yeah. like Iowa. Mm-hmm. Cade uh, McNamara kind of fell back down to earth. Yeah. So then maybe that's a winnable game for Michigan State. And again, the the Boston College game I think is going to be the biggest one and the biggest test. Um so we'll see there. But so far so good. I'm I'm liking where we're at. On the other side, should big, we should big we talk brother. About it? Should we talk about it? Talk about what? What do you want to talk about? These these dudes. Should we talk Harvard. about them at all? Are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> or should we talk about? I mean, we have to. But or, or should we talk about maybe Connor Stallions deserves a, tr- <laughs> uh, a statue? Maybe is that is that uh, what we're going for? So they're no good without him. So he needs a statue. New coaching staff. <laughs> new old line. Uh, new secondary besides Will Johnson. No star receivers. Blake Corum gone, and uh, no QB. It seems that's a bad situation. Or at least uh, I'll 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 get to that. <laughs> so Michigan gets handled. Absolutely yeah. worked. Texas looked good. Yeah, but Michigan just did. I, not. I feel better now than I did while watching. Mm-hmm. But 
it put things into perspective watching that game. Texas is a championship contender. Mm -hmm. Their O line is incredible. They got NFL picks at almost every position. I mean, they're what Sark has built at Texas within three or four years. Mm -hmm. Other guys have failed to do. Everybody's been saying Texas has been overrated for so long. Yeah. He finally got them back to the playoff last year, grabbed Quinn Ewers, brought him back home to Texas from Ohio State, and he's just built Mm -hmm. one after another. The defense is gritty, the the offense is confident, and they rolled. Yeah. I mean, Quinn Ewers looks so composed. Mm -hmm. Michigan was getting pressure on him in the first half, and it didn't mean anything. Yeah. Anytime he felt pressure, he just would sidestep to the left or right. He'd step up whenever he needed to, Mm -hmm. and every throw was effortless and on the money. Yeah, he played like a he played like the best quarterback in college football. That's what he played like. Yeah, there was nothing he was afraid of. Everything looked easy, and man, it it was impressive to watch. I mean, it was sad to watch as a Michigan fan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michigan's offense is lost. Yeah. We thought, or I, I proposed the idea that maybe they were hiding something in their first game. Well, the first drive, it looked like they were uh, unveiling some things because they yeah. were they were driving to the in, to the end zone in the red zone, and uh, and then Kirk Campbell put in Alex Orgy and just telegraphed a run up the middle, mm-hmm. and Texas basically said, "Okay, we know what's yeah. happening." And this is and my, they shut down the drive. That is my biggest problem when college teams play two quarterbacks. For some reason, they get this weird idea that, oh, we're going to have a passing quarterback and a running quarterback, and we're just going to have fun with that. But here's the here's the thing. Get creative if you do. Yeah. They're putting Alex Orgy in, and the defense knows exactly what's mm-hmm. going to happen. Yeah. It wasn't even a read option. A read mm-hmm. option might have worked. Right. It was a send somebody into motion, snap it to Alex. He just waits there for a second to try to find the hole. Yeah. And then Texas is on them. Mm-hmm. Like there there was no creativity creativity to it at all. Yeah. Um and like you said though, like they're not like have Alex pass the ball every once in a while if you're going listen, to swap him in and out. He completed a short touchdown pass to Donovan Edwards. Yeah. He he can complete very short easy passes. Right. He did it. But yeah, that Kurt Campbell doesn't know what he wants to do. Mhm. It is very obvious to me and a lot of Michigan fans that the bet was on Alex Orgy in this offseason. Mm-hmm. They implemented an offense for him. And I think most likely during fall camp, his play just fell off a cliff. His throwing was so inconsistent that they just couldn't do it anymore. And they had to go with Davis Warren. And here's what I'm going to say about Davis Warren. <laughs> I believe that if he played at Eastern Michigan, mm-hmm. Western Michigan, if he played in the MAC, Central Michigan, if he played at a MAC school, yeah, I think he could probably be a very good college quarterback. He has very good arm talent, mm-hmm. but on this level, I, I just I don't think he cuts it. Yeah, his his processing, he's he's a walk on making huge starts right. in college football. I mean, I he he's just not he's not built for this level at least now i don't think a miracle is going to happen yeah maybe he could become decent in the big 10 but i i just don't know if it's possible which is why my argument is like why even if alex orgy's like something happened whether it be fall camp or whatever at this point just give him a go like i feel like in the texas game they were down big enough davis warren proved that he was struggling Throw in the other guy and see what he's got. That's I, the time to do it. I would rather see a hardcore option style offense. Yeah. With a bunch of different weird like formational looks mm-hmm. with Alex Orgy and two backs and two receivers. I'd rather see that than this. Yeah. Like they they could have gone all in, but first year coordinator Kirk Campbell. Sharon is just trusting his guys and trusting his decisions. And it's clear his decision making isn't where it needs to be yet, mm-hmm. because they ignored the transfer portal for quarterback. They ignored it for receiver. They went and got one receiver in the transfer portal, uh, C.J. Charleston, who actually made a catch in the game, mm-hmm. but he was a third, uh, third string receiver from Youngstown State. Yeah, and they brought him in. 
And they brought back a Maureen Walker from Ole Miss who hasn't even played yet. They were so confident in everything returning that they rested on what they had. And they, I, they just didn't think they needed to add anything else, really. Yeah. Now, they, they added transfers on defense, but it, it's just it's not what people expected. Mm-hmm. It's just not. I'm starting to understand why uh, Giants fans don't miss Wink Martindale. <laughs> he might he may have created this defense that Mike McDonald and Jesse Minter ran, mm-hmm. but the way he runs it, it, it's not the same as those guys. Yeah, it just isn't. And they just attacked. They attacked every DB except Will Johnson, mm-hmm. and it kept working. The front seven got overwhelmed and tired after a little while because it was all on them. Mm-hmm. Every time they did get pressure, Quinn Ewers just navigated around it. it Texas is just way better. Yeah. And expectations expectations have to be adjusted. Mm-hmm. Michigan is not one of the best teams in the country. Right. This is a rebuilding year. Mm-hmm. And at, at this point, it is what it is. I mean, against Arkansas State this week, I think they'll probably get a, a, a little bit of a confidence boost. Right. Alex Orgy might get some more shine, but mm-hmm. well, is any of it going to translate to the USC game? Yeah. I I doubt it. USC's offense looks very high-powered. Yeah. And their defense looks very improved. Mm-hmm. So they're just going to attack Michigan. And I, it might be the same as what Texas. Yeah. Maybe not as, as like, machine-like as Texas, mm-hmm. but – Hey man, it eight and four might be the best possible outcome this season. Yeah, nine and three might be a miracle mm. if they just lose to Texas, Oregon, and Ohio State. Yeah, that would be really good at this point, right? Because yeah, things didn't look it. They look very behind what everybody thought. What would you say to the Michigan fans that are at DefCon level one, calling for Jaden Davis? It's not time yet. Yeah, I, I saw people <laughs> talking about that on Twitter. I, I did too, and I actually tweeted for the first time in a long oh boy. time. Oh boy, they got me to tweet, and I said uh, eventually this season they need to go to him. Mm. Those weren't the exact words. I probably was a little bit more urgent and emotional at the time, <laughs> but the plan should still be to redshirt him. Yeah, play him four games. You can play a true freshman four games and still maintain their red shirt. Right. I don't want you to play him any more than that. Yeah. Get him some time. Wait a little bit. Let these two guys, Davis Warren and Alex Orgy, still try to maintain something. Mm-hmm. You went through a full off season with these guys. You can still see what they have yeah. and if they can overcome these struggles. Mm-hmm. But your most talented quarterback is a true freshman on the bench. Yeah. And he knows the plan isn't for him to play this year. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that's the plan. But plans change. Right. And the season has changed. So getting him reps is is a key part of right. what the season is at this point. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be now. Maybe next game they could start. But I don't want to see him against USC. I don't want to see him in the big games. I don't want right. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one little complaint that I do have about Michigan fans, and, you know, normally I don't like to speak out against fandom because every fandom has their crazies. Do it. Um, I speak out about against Michigan so fans. The, I hate I hate insane and ignorant the, fans. The biggest problem that I had online was the whole notion of we lost all these starters. We did this. We, you know, banked on the quarterback and blah blah blah. Like we're just coming off a national championship, and you know, we didn't have high expectations. Everybody that I knew still had people high had expectations high going yeah. into the season. Now, pe- people didn't expect them to win a championship, but yeah. most Michigan fans said 10-2 and two probably. Right. And people definitely expected them to not get smacked by Texas. Yeah. They thought they were going to be competitive, which is now, fine. After week one, there were some fans that adjusted expectations yeah. and were afraid of this game. Right. And that made sense. But, yeah, but going to, into the season, it was higher expectations. Yeah, and they're like, oh, we replace our entire offensive line. That's what championship teams – do the Georgia's Alabama's Ohio State's they win and they reload they win they reload maybe not to the yeah. national championship Michigan again can't reload but they don't recruit like that exactly so level your expectations or 
just realize you you lost. Take the loss. Um, that's you got the, only the butts thing whooped. That was a little bothersome. Is like all the excuses came out after the game. If you would have the people that acknowledged them before the game and said, you know, we might be in trouble here. Fair enough. But the people that you know tried to skew it after the fact is annoying. Listen, before the game, I was texting my friends. I really hope we can pull this off. <laughs> there wasn't an ounce of confidence in it. I was just like. So uh, it, I hope we can do this. <laughs> yeah. That's how I was feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then after that, I was like, because, again, I've been watching these games closely the first two weeks, and after Michigan-Texas, I was like, oh, boy, now I got to go into this Michigan State-Maryland game. I was real nervous. Um, luckily, it, t- it turned out well, but I was like, don't make this a repeat of week two where both teams just struggle. Um, so, yeah, Michigan, they're going to have a bounce back, easy week. Same with Michigan State. And then they have tough games, both of them. So we get kind of a week off and then go into a tougher game next week. Um, The top 25, anybody of interest that you wanted to mention? um, I think the big one outside of Michigan losing was Notre Dame losing, which was hilarious. Notre Dame lost to Northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. It is, it's hard to describe. Yeah. What's what's going on at Notre Dame? Right. <laughs> I mean, they they lost to Marshall. They lost to Stanford when they were like three touchdown favorites. Mm-hmm. And now they just lost to Northern Illinois. Yeah. Which puts Northern Illinois in the top 25. Yeah. Which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> hot seat. Yeah. That That is the word for that situation. Hot seat. Mm-hmm. Things don't go on much longer when you lose that type of game. Yeah, and you do that multiple times, Marshall and and Northern Illinois in a three year span. Mm-hmm. You don't last long after that. And he's recruited at a pretty high level, mm-hmm. and does some transfer portal stuff to, to repair like the stuff they've missed. Yeah, and this still happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just an absolute embarrassment, and puts a smile on my face and made me feel better. Yeah, about the Michigan loss. <laughs> Michigan didn't have the most embarrassing loss on Saturday. Right. Fair enough. Um. Anybody else? Uh. I I mean it's Tennessee it's, at seven. They absolutely manhandled. I was gonna NC say State, so. Tennessee is the other one that's yeah. kind of surprised me so far. Is just their their offense is like insane right now. Um, NIU being ranked is I, <laughs> I love it. It just looks funny. It looks funny, but I love it, especially with Boston College and NIU right there. Like we haven't seen Boston College in a long time. Yeah, like every five or six years, there's a MAC team that just mm-hmm. appears and becomes ranked for a few weeks. So yeah. it's cool that this could happen. It's fun seeing Louisville again. Because they were kind of a surprise yeah. last year until the end of the season where they, they struggled. Um, I want to get your thoughts. Maybe this is the last team we talk about unless you figure somebody out. What are your thoughts on Nebraska That's exactly and that who whole I was about to bring situation? Up. Listen, baby Mahomes, man. This kid. It is so funny and weird and it is hard to explain. But he's he's good. Yeah, I know he is. Like, he was the top-ranked quarterback in the country, mm-hmm. follows his dad's legacy, decommits from Georgia and goes to Nebraska. Yeah. All the hype in the world. And through two games, he's doing it. Mm-hmm. And he looks similar in, yeah. in several ways. He's, like He's copying everything. And so, somehow it's working. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is like when, Trey, when people said Trey Young was like Steph Curry 2.0. That didn't end up. Exactly yeah. happening, right? But it it is eerie watching him play. He wears number fifteen. Mm-hmm. He almost dresses the same on the field. Yeah, the he has ar- the headband now. The arm angles, the arm strength is at a super high level. Mm-hmm. That cross body throw he made for like forty yards yeah. to the end zone was crazy. Like he plays with so much confidence. I want to say the one time I saw him doing the like the hand jive that Pat Mahomes does. Oh, it's that <laughs> stupid thing. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's wild, but listen, as, if it works, and yeah, his, I mean, his confidence is, is like grazing the level of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I love it. Yeah. I, I think it's good when Nebraska is good in college football. Yeah. And it, it's probably going to last a while cause they don't play anybody, um, until, uh, Rutgers October 5th, but they don't play like Ohio state is the end of October basically. Then they have a little bit of a gauntlet. They have Ohio State, UCLA, USC, Wisconsin, and Iowa. But beginning of their season is kind of a cakewalk, so they could they could get some momentum and surprise a yeah, lot of this, people. This should be the year they get back to a bowl game. Mm-hmm. 
and they're not ranked, but yeah, Colorado, sad. Just, yeah. just, just real sad. It's all about Shadur and Travis at this point. The team isn't that great. Yeah, it's it's rough. And the other problem, too, is like from an optics standpoint, like Shadur Sanders calling out his offensive line and things like, like I don't know. It, it's just it might get worse before it gets better. Um, but they're going to be top picks either way. It doesn't, I don't, I don't think it's going to matter at this point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I need to talk about any more teams at the moment. Yeah. Pretty still a few teams drop back, but it is what it is. Yeah. The, t- the top losses. teams, are, the top teams are your usual Georgia, Texas, Ohio state, Alabama, Yeah, Ole Miss and Missouri. Kind of cool, but we'll see. Um, all right. To the NFL, we go. Week one in the books, and uh, we both kind of agree because we were texting each other on Sunday. Kind of some weird play, like offensive lines, in my opinion, were awful. Uh, there was it was a very it was pre- uh, low for like the past decade in terms of quarterback play. Yeah, and it was it also just, it wasn't very good in terms of touchdowns scored on the weekend. One of the lowest in the past decade or so. Um, I I want to say. I don't know the exact number. They were close or tied with the amount of touchdowns last year. So that could correlate with shorter uh, preseason. Not as many starters playing in the preseason. Guys just not ready to go. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was kind of ugly at times, but we had some fun games. And um, the picks were close. They were close. Before we jump in, can I make a very, like, short point? Go for it. Or just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. There are some really good quarterbacks in the league right now. Mm-hmm. A few Hall of Famers, probably a definite one in Pat Mahomes. Yeah. What happened to quarterback play? I don't know. Uh, well, that's why Tom I Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger. Well, we were in Philip Rivers. We were in an era. Eli Manning, Tony Romo. I mean, yeah. Those last few guys were like. Pro bowlers, borderline guys. Russell Wilson that early consistently years. got into playoffs. Mm-hmm. Early Russell, what happened? Yeah, and I, we had Andrew Luck in there, Cam it, Newton. It just, I I don't understand mm-hmm. how like time has gone on. Apparently, football has evolved. Yeah, but quarterbacks a decade ago made this thing look. It was on a whole different level. Yeah, five thousand yard seasons were nothing. Dudes were throwing like forty something touchdown passes a season. Mm-hmm. I. I know that there is yeah. some like data that goes into, um, you know, a couple years ago, offenses were crazy. Um, and Pat Mahomes, I think that's when he threw for 5,000. And that's when the two high safety thing started. And so teams started playing the two high safeties, letting more underneath routes go. So there wasn't as many big plays. Hmm. I might have partially to do with it. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting thing. The other thing too is, the mobility of quarterbacks nowadays, like 90% of the quarterbacks you just mentioned couldn't move out of the pocket. Um, whereas now, like every quarterback to a certain extent has mobility. Jared Goff even looked a little spry on, on Sunday night, which was <laughs> hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think there's just other elements in the game that are affecting that. I'm not going to lie. I, I kind of missed that era of quarterbacking. Yeah, 2011, four guys threw for 5,000 yards. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Matthew Stafford. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, I just wanted to say that real quick. No, it's, it, it's, it's just strange to me. I, I think it's valid. Yeah. Um, But I think it's just kind of the way the game has evolved a little bit, both defensively um, and the skills that quarterbacks are needing, it seems like. Um, But, yeah. So, like I said, picks are close. You beat me. You did win week one. 10 to 8. Oh, yeah, so that's really close. the surprising ones that happened, uh, you picked Chicago. That that game just made me mad. Uh, listen, and seventeen to nothing lead for the Titans. Your favorite quarterback, Will Levis. Oh man, the Mayo <laughs> man. He he pulled something. Yeah, I don't I don't know what he pulled, but he pulled something in that last quarter. Yeah, it Some was things ugly. Things happened. Um, so that was a frustrating loss. I took the Colts. You took Houston. That was a good game. Probably one of the better games of the weekend. Um, I took Jacksonville. You took Miami. Uh, so you got a point there. You took Carolina, which looks really bad now. <laughs> actually, I don't, I don't know, man. Actually, back to know. back, you took Carolina. I took New Orleans. 
you also took the Giants. So <laughs> you got a little you got a little excited. You liked some of your early picks. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember my reasoning for the Giants at all. Not sure either. I maybe it was just, just like home game. You were probably just getting cocky. But maybe, yeah, know. it could have been home home yeah. field. And I didn't trust Sam Darnold, which he balled out. <laughs> yeah. Nobody uh, expected the Giants to play as bad as they did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had the Chargers. You had the Raiders. Um, you took Cleveland. They looked rough. Deshaun. We're not gonna we're not gonna go deep into that. Yeah, one. I took Washington, but their defense is just as bad as it's yeah. always been. Jaden Daniels was trying. He looked okay, but yeah, yes, it's, it's a lot they need to fix. And then I took the Jets, thinking that San Francisco was gonna be in trouble. Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk looked like he was in trouble, but the rest of their offense was clicking, even without yeah. McCaffrey. Jordan Mason went crazy. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even know that going into picks. Yeah. So crazy. So we move on to week two, and we hope for. Better offense overall. Our seasons always start close. This yeah. it starts this way every single time. Yeah. And uh, so we start Thursday night, Buffalo at Miami. Hopefully we start, you know, the high scoring right away tomorrow night. Um, who do you think you got in this game? I'm going to go with my gut. Okay. And my gut is telling me one team, things look kind of off. Yeah. And the other team, I think they still got some in the tank. Mm-hmm. I'm going with the Bills. Okay. The way they ran that offense against Jacksonville, Miami, I almost feel like they shouldn't have won that game. No, they they like, shouldn't have. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Um, Travis Etienne, I believe, fumbled yeah. in the red zone or something mm-hmm. or at the five-yard line, something like that. Like That would have been the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, Tua didn't look great. The play calling wasn't that good either. Mm-hmm. Tyreek didn't really like blow up until the third. Yeah. He did eventually, but. And he did get the handcuff celebrations. So. He did. Yeah. And he helped me win my week one in fantasy too. Shouts yeah. out to Tyreek. Yeah. But yeah, I, I it's a, just a weird vibe with, with Miami to me. So I'm just going to go Buffalo. Yeah. I, I think I have to ride that as well. Um, Raheem Moser got ruled out for this game um, on Thursday. Uh, HN is questionable. Sounds like a game time decision, most likely. So if they have to go to Jeff Wilson and their rookie, Jalen Wright, I don't know if that's enough. And Josh Allen, like I, I think I said it on maybe it was our fantasy podcast the other day. Like maybe Josh Allen has the a year like Patrick Mahomes did when he first lost Tyreek Hill. If like maybe you don't have an elite wide receiver, but because of that, you don't rely on one guy and you just you play you ball out because it's like all on you. So maybe Josh Allen finally has his MVP season this year and the Bills just look really good again with, you know, new talent. Keon Coleman looked much better than I expected in game one at least. So I think I'm going to go Buffalo as well. Um, Tampa Bay at Detroit, the other playoff rematch for the Lions. Um, kind of weird how this that worked, that they're they're rerunning their playoff run yeah. um, for the most part. But um, Tampa Bay, Baker Mayfield looked Really good, actually. That offense looked great. They they probably had the best offensive yeah get week of any team. In the yeah, league. they got Chris Godwin back involved. Mike Evans looked like Mike Evans, and then the Lions. And another like Lions type game of they came out swinging, looked really good, and then came out in the second half, kind of let the Rams back in it. Then they had to tie the game up, and then in overtime they just made it look like it wasn't even a game again. And David Montgomery just ran it down the Rams' yeah. throats. So, I don't know. I, I think the, the Lions are going to be a lot more prepared for this game, hopefully. They're going to, you know, fix up everything. And, I mean, Jamison Williams had a, a big coming out party for this season, which was cool to see. Um, so, I cannot pick the Bucks because it's the Lions at home. But do you have any thoughts about the Lions in game one? I think they was just... Uh, they have so much hype on them. Mm-hmm. They have so many expectations for the first time in franchise history. I don't. I don't think it was possible for them to just come out and look like superheroes. Mm-hmm. They still have some things they they need to fix. They're not a perfect team. Jared Goff had an excellent season last year and is a really good quarterback, but he still has flaws sometimes. Yeah, he's not going to air it out and just be. He's like a quarterback from the early 2010s or the 2000s. He's mm-hmm. one of the last of his kind. 
Yeah. Where he just stands in the pocket most of the time and just makes decisions. Right. And those types of quarterbacks do have ups and downs. And he had a few downs. He had a pick. He had another uh, throw picked. that should have, yeah, probably should have been picked. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, I think it was, I, I don't, I'm not con- super concerned yeah. about them for the rest of the season. Yeah. It was a typical like week one. Yeah. Just, just figuring things out. Yeah. If anything, I'm I'm more almost excited because like Amon Ra had a terrible game. Um, as far as catching the ball, he had three catches uh, for like 18 yards. Sam Laporta didn't do a whole lot. I think he had a couple catches. Um, so like the running backs kind of held it down. Jamison Williams did, but we know like there's a lot more talent on this team that can do good. And the other thing for me that was exciting was although Cooper Cup did classic Cooper Cup things. I don't know how that man gets open for all these years and nobody's ever... Puka Nakua like, went down and he still just kept getting... I don't open. know how you don't like completely just focus on him on defense, but anyway, he's insane. The defense overall looked a lot better, in my opinion. At least the secondary looked like, for the most part, they were batting down balls and things like that. Yeah, they still made some mistakes here and there, but overall, I feel like there's more promise for the secondary, and there should be. They put a lot of um, effort into bolstering that that secondary this year. Um, the the one other super frustrating thing is they are still not getting sacks. Still too much on eight. I know it's game one, Yeah, but holy smokes. Like, there you got was, that one sack in the fourth quarter. Yeah, there was – I think Aiden missed one earlier, and I think Marcus Davenport missed one as Aiden well. Aiden missed one in the second half, I think. Yeah. I, I don't think it was the first – well, was it the first half? I'm getting mixed up. I don't remember up. when it but was. But I, I remember he he had like a clear shot on Matthew Stafford. Yeah. And Matthew brushed it off. And I know there was one where Marcus Davenport basically had his mitt on Matthew Stafford. And he was getting a little bit uh, held by the offensive lineman. But I just feel like he should have been able to grab onto Matt. And he couldn't get to him. So it's like more of that, come on, let's just, can we get home, please? Um, little frustrations like that. But the, again, the pressure is still there. And I'm expecting if DJ Reader is healthy this week, that's going to help a lot because you're going to get that pressure up the middle more. Um, and that might allow Davenport and Hutch to, you know, switch it around and do different moves to get in there. But either way, I like the, the look. I'm taking the Bucks. I think this could be like Oh my goodness. Man. I think this could be like the Seahawks from last year, the Seahawks game. The we play the years. Seahawks coming up. I think this could I think it could flip. I think they beat the Seahawks this year. But I think this could be like that type of game where Terry and Arnold gets his like welcome to the NFL moment. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin just get loose all over the place. And Baker gets comfortable. They might have a little bit more pressure getting those sacks. Baker broke a lot of, of sacks last week. Yeah. Making magic. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. We do have Carlton Davis. He's familiar with True. these guys. So maybe he's got some intel. But uh, to just this one week, I'm taking the Bucks. Wow. I hope this doesn't uh, kill my chances to win. Geez. My karma's gone. <laughs> I hope it completely ends you. <laughs> um, I have Jamison Williams on my fantasy, so I'm, I'm going to be rooting for him. Oh, gosh. New Orleans at Dallas. New Orleans, they looked really good, but they played the Panthers. Dallas looked yeah. really good. Derek Carr had one of those flashback moments. Yeah. Back to when I used to root for him. Long time ago. Yeah. And then Dallas, they beat up on the Browns, who a lot of people thought their defense would be able to carry them. Uh, not when Deshaun Watson is uh, behind the helm, apparently. Um, Browns just look bad. I think I'm just going with Dallas because they're at home. I think New Orleans is going to be decent this year, but I don't I don't think they're that good overall. I'm going to go with the Cowboys also. Okay. Oh, boy. I almost feel bad if they weren't a division rival, but Indianapolis at Green Bay. Looks like we're getting Malik Willis for Green Bay. Give me the Colts. <laughs> yeah. Give me the Colts. Um. What are the chances Malik Willis just has a weird, random, fantastic You know, game? for Malik Willis, I would like to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen. It probably won't. Uh, Green Bay would have to win with their defense, I think, with Anthony Richardson just struggling. Yeah. He's still figuring things. He made one of the best throws I've ever seen last week. <laughs> yeah. He he looks like season two Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of people are like down and quitting on Anthony Richardson. Mm. I maybe it's because they think it's impossible for Josh Allen to happen again. Yeah, but he looks just like that, mm-hmm. and I don't believe people. Te- I don't remember people tearing Josh Allen to shreds right during his second season when he was still figuring things out. Mm-hmm. Like this kid's talent is on display. Yeah, I think that's maybe the only difference is like I feel like Anthony Richardson going into things had a little bit more hype than Josh Allen did. He did. Yeah. So it's like the expe- expectations are a little bit higher. Maybe that's what's causing it, but I, I I agree. And I think the biggest surprise too, like he missed AD Mitchell a couple times yeah. and AD Mitchell got free a few times. Which and was, those, those were the type of throws Josh Allen would miss. Right. Like wide open. Yeah. So if he starts hitting those, like, yeah, Indianapolis could be crazy. Yeah. Um, the jets at the Titans. Two teams that had disappointing week ones, but they I'm, looked okay. I'm not picking the Titans. Okay. I'm not picking the Mayo, man. Yeah, not against this defense. I don't yeah. think it's enough for me either. Um, I want to pick the Titans, but I picked them last week, and they just they crumbled. Um, so it was unfortunate. Um, San Francisco at Minnesota. Man, not a great matchup either. You trying to pick Minnesota here? Getting cute with things? No. Because I'm not. No. I can't. Um, Christian McCaffrey might still be out for this game. Was that four straight games we just picked the same? I, it, yeah. That's that's why I was, like, disappointed. Um, but we're coming up on some some closer matchups. Uh, Seattle at New England. New England kind of the surprise of the week beating the Bengals. I wasn't as surprised when I realized that – or when I saw that T. Higgins was ruled out uh, because Jamar Chase was um, getting limited snaps. I just thought maybe there's a chance that – Can I pick first? Yeah, go for it. I'm just going with something weird. New England starting 2-0 and would be the funniest thing ever. It would. And I'm just going to go New England. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll go Seattle. There is a chance uh, Ken Walker sits out this game. They do have Zach Charbonnet, who's a good backup. Um, but, yeah, I Seattle looked oddly bad against Denver. I thought they were going to blow out Denver. They kind of struggled for a little while, which was concerning. But, um, yeah, I'll go Seattle. Um, Giants. At the Commanders. Rough game. No defense going to be played here. Give me the Commanders. Okay. I trust Jaden Daniels more than Daniel Jones. Yeah. <laughs> That's depressing, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know how many like fan reaction videos I've watched of Giants fans like talking about that game? Yeah. Well, did you see the, it is so interesting. the Giants fans as Daniel Jones was leaving, leaving the yes. stadium? One fan was like, Daniel, you owe me money. Yeah. And the rest of them booed. If he didn't Tough. get a giant contract, I would probably feel bad for Daniel Jones. But yeah. he has that giant contract. Um, I'm going to go with the Giants since you uh, were so kind to take New England last yeah. in the last game. I'll take the Giants. There is still that, like, what was it? Was it 2021 that Daniel Jones had, like, a decent season? It was 2022. 2022. Brian Dayball's first season. They made it to yeah, because they yeah. made it to the playoffs. They he beat, won coach they, of the they year. Beat Minnesota. Yeah, and Daniel Jones. It was his one like good season. Yeah, and he had some, even though he only had like 15 passing touchdowns. Right. But yeah. But he had some good moments. Um, you know, he's always. It seems like every year he's still good for like some big run play every once in a while. So I'll bank on that. Um, Chargers at the Panthers. People are already calling for Bryce Young to be done. It makes me sad. It's a, sometimes guys, some guys, it just doesn't happen for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why he's not that accurate. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, like, sometimes he just doesn't see things. Because those were his strengths coming out of college. Yeah. <laughs> Accuracy and seeing the field. Right. And they even and went like out. being precise. They even went out and got, like, one of the best short yard wide receivers in Deontay Johnson to be able to make it so that he has a, a nice, reliable slot receiver to go to. And he's still not, he's not seeing it. Um, yeah, I'm it is unfortunate. Chargers. Yeah. Um, Listen, J.K. Dobbins. That's a great I'm so story. I'm so happy for him, man. Yeah. Those two big runs, that, that, that was really good. Mm-hmm. And then Lad McConkey, that touchdown was impressive. Those cutbacks. Yeah, I, I think they could, they could have some. Quentin Johnston. He may have a few He looked catches. okay. Comparatively, yeah. he looked like an NFL receiver. Yeah, um, I would bad. like to take Carolina. But He's a first round pick, so that kind of sucks. But I know. Yeah. yeah, 
but you it's know, good to start. it's nice to see somebody sort of bounce back. Yeah. Um, then we got Cleveland at Jacksonville. Who's who's trusting Deshaun Watson? I don't know. Like, they, if they throw in Jameis, things could get very strange. It could get fun. And fun, yeah. It would be fun. Give Jameis a chance. But he hasn't I, had a chance in years. I, I it would have to be like some second half thing where Deshaun like bottoms out, mm-hmm. and that's possible. Yeah. But even if they throw, throw Jameis in, I'm going Jacksonville. Okay. I'm gonna go Cleveland here, just because. I think it's a close enough matchup. Tell me why Deshaun is going to be a pro bowler again, an elite quarterback. Uh, no. Tell me why. I'm just going to tell you that Cleveland's, Why you believe in Deshaun Watson. Cleveland's defense is one of the best defenses in, in the NFL, and Trevor Lawrence is notorious for fumbling the ball. Yeah. Maybe something happens. I don't know. Um, Brian Thomas Jr., though, he looked good. That throw Trevor Lawrence made to him for a touchdown was really impressive. Yeah, that was fun to watch. Um, we got the Raiders at the Ravens. This is uh, this the Raiders is not, looked worse than I thought they would. Yeah, Zamir White was awful. Antonio Pierce's decision making was. They weird. just played it very safe. Yeah, um, I would have thought that Gardner Minshew would have gotten more opportunity to to sling it a little bit because he's not going to start long to me. Ah, uh, yeah. Aiden O'Connell is going to be a starter soon. Yeah, and they're drafting somebody. Yeah, and they they just might be a mess. And. uh Baltimore was is interesting. Their offense was not what I expected. They threw the ball a lot more. Lamar um, still rushed for over 100 yards, which was – I love yeah. to see that, though, because they got back to more of, like, creating plays for Lamar and things like that and him being more willing to run and make moves. Uh, I loved seeing it. Yeah. Uh, then we have the Rams um, at the Cardinals for our this first 4 o'clock game. This is more interesting. Yeah, and, the Cardinals were putting up a fight. Mm-hmm. And the Rams have so many injuries, and they're yeah. beaten and battered. But I, I don't know. I'm going to pick the Cardinals. Okay. Let's let's get nuts in the words of a great man. Let's get nuts. You want to get nuts? <laughs> let's get nuts. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll take the Rams then. I think this, is, this could be a fun matchup. It could be a shootout. Um, Those all-cherry uniforms are an eyesore to me. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's like they're they're like a little like darker red than the mm-hmm. originals. Yeah, I don't like it that much. Um, I think Arizona is going to need Marvin Harrison to step up a little bit, or for Kyler to see him, I guess, because yeah. he did miss him on a wide open touchdown. But Arizona, yeah, I, I think they could be a fun team to watch going forward. And then the Rams, they're going to be without Puka Nakua, but they do have Demarcus Robinson and Tyler Johnson, who looked pretty decent for them. Um, but their their defense might be in trouble. Um, this might be the snooze fest of the week. Pittsburgh at Denver. You want to know? I think it's Justin Fields starting. Pretty sure. You want to know something weird? Yeah. I didn't hate watching Bo Nix in that first game. I liked him better in the preseason, but I did too. But on the road against Seattle, when your first ever start with a Skill talent around you that – how would you describe the skill talent around Bo Nix, Joey? Um, very okay. So him just trying to run around and make plays, what else would I do I expect from him? Yeah. Because those guys weren't open a ton. Right. So I, I liked his effort even though there were some sketchy things going on. Mm-hmm. And they stayed close. That rushing touchdown was it, – it was fun to me. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't yeah. have a problem with it. With that being said, Pittsburgh is winning this game. <laughs> Because their their defense looked ridiculous against the Falcons. Part of that was Kirk Cousins, but T.J. Watt is just unstoppable. Yeah, um, and I don't think Denver's offensive line is all that good. Yeah. Bo Nix is going to be hearing footsteps all night. Seeing ghosts, perhaps. We can't say it anymore. Sam found a new life. I know. We can't say it. Um. Yeah, I can't go Denver. It'd be fun, but Cincinnati at Kansas City. Cincinnati. This should normally be a really fun matchup, but I'm not that excited for it. It seems like all their mojo is just gone. Mm-hmm. Did you? I, see I don't it? know if it's the money disputes or yeah. the injuries over time. Like, have you been seeing the the Twitter videos of Joe Burrow trying to pick up his Gatorade? Have you seen that at all? No. So he goes and sits. Like they show him like really holding his wrist and trying to stretch his wrist out like all throughout the game, and then it goes to the it cuts to. 
Joe Burrow sitting on the bench and he grabs the Gatorade with like his fingertips or something. And then he like does this weird like hand movement to try to get it to to lift it up. And people are like, he can't even pick up a Jeez. Gatorade bottle. The, I think they're overreacting a little bit, but it is a little bit that, weird. That looks that sounds alarming. Um, so there is possibly concern there that like his wrist is just never gonna be fully perfect, and that it might be sore. Because you did, I didn't really see it during the game. It just seemed like they didn't have enough talent, to be honest. Um, Zach Moss. They didn't throw any deep balls, really. No. And like I said, Jamar Chase played limited uh, snaps. He got six catches for like sixty-two yards. But that could be an ongoing thing if if he really wants this contract because he said that he'll play without the contract. But is he going to take more time off because of not having a contract? I don't know. Um, and then Kansas City, they just they look fun. Xavier Worthy adds a whole new dynamic to that offense, yeah. which we haven't seen since Tyreek Hill. And their defense looks just as good as they did last year. So um, I guess we're going Kansas City. Chicago at Houston is our Sunday night game. I think this is a sneaky, fun matchup. Um, again, Chicago's defense is so good. The problem is Caleb Williams didn't really do anything. Now, do I expect a quarterback to do anything their first game? Not really, because rookie quarterbacks usually struggle in their first game. This was the first rookie quarterback, or I think it was number one overall pick, that won their first game since like two thousand, early 2000s, like 2006 or something like that. And Caleb Williams didn't really contribute to the win. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see the defense versus Houston's offense kind of match up. Um, Houston looked kind of where they left off. Joe Mixon was a big surprise. He had a, like 159 yards on the ground off 30 carries. Kind of looked better than I've ever seen him, to be honest. And, um, yeah, I, I think I'm I'm going to pick first. I'm going to go with Chicago with the road upset. Hmm. I'm not super confident, but I'm hoping. I'm going with Houston. I think they were very similar to the Lions in week one. Hmm. CJ Stroud didn't look very uh, like very clean. Yeah, He made some good throws, uh, some really good throws to Nico Collins. But overall, nothing special. Mm-hmm. The team relied on the run. Their defense were, get, were getting picked apart at times. They let uh, Anthony Richardson make some big throws and score touchdowns. But they pulled it out in the end. Mm-hmm. And I think they kind of put the pedal to the metal in this game. Yeah. I think Houston yeah, takes off. Okay. They win this one. And our Monday night matchup. I'm so excited that our first – well, not our first Monday night, but our first Battle of the Birds it's is here. on Monday night. Can you believe it's here, Joey? I can't. What a time to be you alive. You know, I wish I was a little more excited about the Falcons, though. Because then this would have been a really fun game. But the Falcons looked awful in week one. Listen. Awful. I, I've watched several videos of analysts on Twitter like showing Kirk Cousins all of his throws. And a lot of people think he just can't drive. Mm-hmm. That injury is still bothering him. Yeah. Yeah, he he can't make throws like he usually wants to. Mm-hmm. And they, they were saying that, like, what, 90% of their plays were either shotgun or pistol or something like they played pistol and Kirk Cousins does not fit the pistol off yeah and they they said something too like when they were in the pistol they they ran it like 80 percent of the time they could they really couldn't even get B. John Robinson going no so I don't know Drake London struggled again Kyle Pitts finally got a touchdown we haven't seen that in a long time but uh, there's not much home much to write home about and then Philly they look pretty good outside of Jalen Hurts Jalen Hurts turned the ball over too many times. Um, but, like, Saquon looked really good for them. Jalen, he did hit some big throws. He did, him. yeah. Um, and A.J. Brown had that big play after the catch. Mm-hmm. But um, So I think Philadelphia is going to be just fine. But Atlanta, they're kind of a big concern. They, Listen, they need to bounce back. In the people big. will be calling for Michael Penix. People, I've people already, are already doing it. I was going to say they're already but, kind of yeah, it. If this game, if they start 0-2, yeah, people will be screaming at the top of their lungs for that kid. Yeah, because this team was expected to win the South and be at least be com- super competitive. Yeah, so I don't know. I-, I can't pick Atlanta until I see something out of them. Neither can I. Okay, unfortunate. But that's your week two picks. Um, 
I don't know. Is is there anything that caught you off guard in this week one of the NFL besides just bad play? Anything else you can think of? A specific player or something that just didn't didn't live up to expectations? Or how did you feel about the rookies? Let's talk about the rookies. Caleb Williams, you, we kind of mentioned. The rookie, of, none of the rookie quarterbacks were super impressive. Yeah. Dayton Daniels was decent. Yeah. He ran um, a lot. I think even more than I thought that they would run him. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think. Were there any rookies that like had big like great games? No, Roma Dunze got hurt. Um, Jalen McMillan for Tampa Bay caught a touchdown pass. Yeah, but I think that was his only catch. Yeah, Lad um, McConkey had that one impressive mm-hmm. touchdown catch. Um, Malik Neighbors did all right. He was decent. Uh, um, but he was not super happy after the game, which he shouldn't. Be. I don't know <laughs> if he. Like you would think that he would see that coming because he's playing with his team every day, you know, realizing maybe they're not that good. Um, I don't know. I'll give you one. Joe Alt did surprisingly well against Max Crosby. Yeah. I watched most of his snaps on somebody's video on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And Max was getting his moves off, but Joe Alt was keeping his hands on him, and it was, like, disrupting yeah. Max, Rock, Max Crosby getting to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And it was impressive. Yeah. First game against uh, an elite pass rusher joe alt was pretty good mm-hmm. yeah other than that I, I don't think too many of the top picks really what do you think impressed. about terry and arnold i think he Week looked one. good um I, supposedly cooper cup was giving him compliments um mm-hmm. saying that he played him really tough um but he's cooper cup at the end of the day so it's like how much you take into that mm-hmm. but it felt like he was doing pretty good on people um the one surprise for the lions i think is seeing um Vaki actually line up in the backfield a couple times like I didn't think I that happened in the second in the second half I, I don't remember it I don't the remember I, I don't remember when it was exactly yeah. but I know that I only I saw, saw him, him on special teams yeah I saw him a couple times in the backfield hmm. um I believe they were in I can't remember what formation they were in but um it was kind of like a double back kind of set thing and um they never really went to him, but he was out there, which was a surprise for me. Um, the other thing that I thought was funny, because he plays on the special teams, he plays on kickoff or punt. Um, they have him, like, off set on the line, and a lot of people are saying they're definitely going to draw up a play of, like, Jack Fox throwing it to him or something, which would be insane. Yeah, they're giving away the secret sauce a little too early <laughs> because there's a chance it could happen. Yeah, but, I again, yeah. I was surprised that he got – playing time that early on outside of special teams. So I'd give him a few carries a game, honestly. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. A few looks mm-hmm. in the passing game too. Yeah. But either way, week one is over. Hopefully we get some more offense. Hopefully we get to see the lions open it up a little bit more even and uh, keep continue, continue this role next week. We'll go over the recap and talk about week three preview picks and um, talk about week three. In college football, like I said, it should be pretty easy for Michigan and Michigan State. Might not be too much to talk about, so maybe we'll focus on some other teams um, before those teams get into their gauntlet. But uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. The Tigers are three and a half boy from a playoff spot. That's what I meant to talk about. Dang. Talking about it more soon. <laughs>